Okay, so if refuelings might have some niche applications, it's certainly not going to be the big application. That's right. How about cleaning up the space junk? You know, we have a Clean Up Australia Day when people go around <laughs> with nets and uh, gloves and pick up rubbish that people have thrown out of roads. Can we have a Clean Up Space Day when we go and collect the stuff? Well, look, you know, believe it or not, people are thinking along those lines. Less of, again, sending a human there, but what if we had a satellite that could deploy some sort of net now we're not talking about fish wire or or cotton net but something that could then shoot grab onto the satellite and then pull it in so the idea is well if we had this maybe we could then bring in the old satellite now that could either be pulled into say the international space station and brought down safely it could be controlled re-entered so this could say all right, now I'm going to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. And bring it with I'm us. bringing you with me. Um, or some combination of the two. Now, again, there are advantages and disadvantages of this. How many satellites can you realistically collect? You would have to find the right material to grab it and pull it in. And you still have to then build a satellite that may produce more junk for every time you do it. It's not going to clean up the small space junk, but the idea would be to get rid of the big decrepit satellites and perhaps in the most dangerous orbits before they hit something else and produce more junk. Exactly. So if you know of one that ends up being particularly risky because of where it is, let's go after that one because that's going to be our biggest return. Now, this is from the University of Surrey, um, who has actually done this. So this is no longer a theoretical idea. They put a dummy satellite here and they launched their net. And the net goes off, and you can see it's even slightly attached, and they cut it. So they can essentially fish in space, but for satellites. And then they were able to pull it in. Now, this was for a satellite where they put in, they know what the speed is, what the orbit is, where it is, and what would happen to it. But they were able to do it. So there's an idea that maybe this has promise not for widespread cleaning up of junk, but that at least it could help, as you said, make sure those, the most dangerous bits or the most crowded orbits have a better way of completing up. But again, this is only the big stuff. This isn't the small stuff. Yes, but I mean, if all new rockets are launched are deorbited, not just 70% of them or 60% yep. of them, and we can then start getting rid of the big old stuff. I mean, we talked about 20,000 pieces of space junk, but most of those are tiny things. Exactly. So the, the number of big ones might be in the hundreds. The hundreds to maybe a couple of thousand at most, yeah. So in principle, you could try and deorbit them and then start, and then you'll just have to wait for the small ones to go, go away. On. So yeah, so this is the idea, is that maybe we use a combination of techniques, preventing it, controlling it, uh, and cleaning up some of the big ones. But there still is the idea, we still have a lot of these small ones, is there anything we can do about it? That's what we're going to take a look at next.